are at Corbell Champagne Cellars. And what are we gonna do? We're hopefully going to taste some champagne. Yes. And get get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna get about um, the 1880s, the whole area was clear cut. Um, so all the trees you see now are second or third generation trees, so not as big as they once were, but they're certainly getting there. Um, the one that was imprisoned in Prague, um, Anton in the middle, and then Joseph on the left. And if you look around them, you'll notice various friends and family that came over from Bohemia to help out with the business. Um, if you look really far, making them difficult to remove. So it actually wasn't until the 1960s that those stumps were removed, and they were removed by blowing them up with dynamite. Kind of, these smaller barrels will last anywhere from three to five years, and then they really lose that oaky flavor. So we stop using them, we cut them in half, and we sell them as planter boxes to those that want them for about like nine months. Long enough time for the yeast to convert all the sugars into the CO2 that makes the bubbles. So they would lay on. There was no real twisting of the bottles, but the vibration of the motor alone would get that yeast. So. Here's how they work. I don't want to startle anyone, so they're kind of noisy. Really it's a metal down inside here at the same time that we're squeezing that cork small enough so that it could fit in the neck of the bottle. Lay the bottle on its side, and then you proceed to pop the top off. Because the pressure in this bottle at this point, it pushes that yeast plug out. And you would think by the look of this, it would be a big, messy, violent explosion, but it's not. So, Corbell was the official champagne of the Millennium, which is kind of neat for us. We, of course, like to talk about it. Are you ready for the wine? For the uh, Oh, yeah. Champagne? I'm so ready for the champagne. But it's got a real fruit forward flavor to it, so it kind of balances it out a bit. Um, a lot of people even try it and they're like, oh, it's not even dry. I would consider that it is a 0.75% of sauce. So the 06 is actually what was served for President Obama last season. Mostly Pinot Noir, about 75% Pinot Noir. Um, there's a little gamay, sandwich, and vanilla. Mm -hmm. yeah, this one's a real favorite, you know, I mean. If you don't know what people like, it's good to have because it's not too dry, it's not too sweet. So I usually bring this to parties. It is a sweeter one. It's definitely considered a dessert champagne. Is that it's your sweetest one? Technically it is. Okay. We've also got the Moscato Frizzante, which is also pretty sweet. Um, I think this is the sweetest because um, it has a 6% dosage, which means it would be about 6 teaspoons of sugar in the entire bottle. It's like a candy sweet, yeah. whereas the Moscato is a little more fruity sweet. Yummy. <laughs> Yeah. This one. I really like the sweet rose, but I think the Moscato was the best. It was more like a, a citrusy flavor. It wasn't as like candy flavor. More right. aromatic. Yes. Okay. Like, yes. yes. I myself, I I really enjoyed the Moscato. I'm kind of on the fence between the Moscato and the sweet rose. Sweet rose is like sweeter and like, you know, I really like sweet champagnes, but this one is just very unique. Yes. Yay! All right. Cheers to that! <laughs> Yeah.